him at all. Yeah. There we go. Oh, crap. Get him with the dark shield or something. What am I sp Okay, let's look around. Can I hit something over here? This keeps spinning into eternity. See you're a man well traveled, so tell me. What what is this? Roach? What are you stuck on? There you go. Tiny little pebble. Can stop even the great roach every once in a while. Peter is saying hashtag today I ate a whole goat. Yeah, it's a you know, sometimes you get a powerful hunger. Get shot with a crazy tranquilizer dart. You gotta do something to keep yourself awake. He is called Snake. Maybe he unhinges his jaw and he just ah he eats the whole thing in one big uh one big bite, you know. Oh, that's a no. I got tricked by my own decoy. That's not a guy. See, it is. I, it's understandable how the guards could fall for that. Okay. <laughs> we. <laughs> this one. Uh, <laughs> it's this boring there, and they don't have Wi-Fi, which is kind of the character we've been playing this whole time of like the cheeky guy. Or we could just get her to elaborate on it, which is obviously pretty good direction as well. We're gonna do the Wi-Fi thing. This is my favorite episode so far, by the way. <laughs> Grand Canyon, but isn't that like just some big empty hole in the ground? It is what it is, <laughs> but it's very picturesque. They don't have nightclubs there, do they? No, it's <laughs> more of a natural. How fast the Wi Fi? <laughs> I think they probably would have cell coverage in some parts. Yeah, 4G. LTE. Maybe. I don't know. Mm. Guess they'll never learn. Oh my god! That's an Assassin's Creed joke! I gotta screenshot that. Guys! That's an Assassin's Creed joke! It's Altair trying to jump into a hay bale and he messed it up! Oh my god. That is amazing. Oh, oh no! He's begging for mercy. And he doesn't get it. Bonk. Uh oh. Where'd Majima come from? He was in the garbage can! Oh, Majima. You are a treasure. Don't ever change, Majima. You're the greatest man who ever lived. I love you. Sassy Wolf saying, This is strange. What, you never played a rigged slot machine before? I'll tell you, that's the secret to gambling. You gotta play the rigged ones. You can't play the regular old dumb gambling games. Why bother playing if it ain't rigged, right? What is this? Press any key to attempt to continue. Critical error. There's been an unrecoverable error and it is probably your fault. <laughs> error description, error not found. If this is the first time you've encountered this error, try thumping the controls. Then, report yourself for striking a superior officer. That's right, the computer outranks you. If you continue to receive this message, you must really have screwed up something bad. Contact IT support and apologize profusely for interrupting their snooze time. Technical information. Stop. Beginning dump of physical lavatory. <laughs> wow, that was great. I'm really glad I took the time to read that. That was a good idea, bringing the cigarettes, but uh, don't smoke too much. Cigarettes make you weak in mind. Welcome everybody to another Voice of Nick show. Doing more of the uh, Post-America book project here. 
Um, I have the first couple pages of this next chapter recorded. Um, so this is kind of like a piecemeal uh, thing here, but we're gonna we're gonna work on this beginning part. I'll post in the chat details about the project if they want to show up, which they don't. Oh, I always post the wrong thing. I should actually make a command for that because I always accidentally write that in the chat. Uh, Post America is an ancient Greek story that um, was written in roughly three to four hundred A.D. It's, uh, it tells the story of what happens between Homer's The uh, Iliad and Homer's The Odyssey. Nobody has done an audiobook version uh, that's available in stores or for sale or anything, so I'm doing it. <laughs> I, I, I am the one to, to try and try my hand. Um, and that's what we're producing right here. Uh, this will eventually be available uh, on Kindle in, in a text edition that I'm also releasing with illustrations and this audiobook version, which is going to be on Audible uh, platform. So keep your eyes open. Book three. Book three. Book three. How by the shaft of a god laid low was hero Achilles. How by the shaft of a god laid low was hero Achilles. Yeah, second one's better. Uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Anybody who doesn't know what happens to Achilles. Interesting that uh, out of 14 books or chapters, as, as you might think of them, uh, Achilles sort of like, uh, you know, fate happens in the third of 14 chapters. You would think that would be near the end. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes down in the end of the Trojan War. Okay, so let's start formatting. Book three. How by the shaft of a... Let's let me maybe raise this a little bit. Book three. How by the shaft of a... And then this, we want to... Book three. How by the shaft of a god laid low... Shaft of a god laid low the shaft of a god laid low was hero achilles when shown the when shown the light of dawn the splendor but that great yeah. i don't know the timing that i put between let's check our previous chapter and see what we had for that. Book two, how Memnon. 1.5, okay, so that's exactly what we have here. It's really important to me to make sure that the formatting is, is correct, uh, that there's like a little rhyme and a reason to a lot of this stuff that's, that's happening here. It's a lot like formatting a text edition where there, there's like very particular rules that you would set for like how the text is formatted. It has to make sure that it stays regular throughout the whole edition. Then shone the light of dawn, the splendor throned. Then to the ships the Pylian spearmen bore Antilochus' corpse, sore sighing for their prince. And by the Hellespont buried, and by the Hellespont they buried him with sighing for their prince. And by the Hellespont they buried him with aching hearts. Around him groaning around but that gray Hellespont they buried him with aching hearts. Around him groaning stood the battle eager sons of Argives, all for love of Nestor shrouded over with grief. But that gray hero's heart was nowise crushed by sorrow, for the wise man's soul endures bravely, and cowers not under affliction's stroke. But Peleus' son, wroth for Antilochus, his dear friend, armed for vengeance terrible upon the Trojans. But Peleus' son, yea, and these, yea, and the, but Peleus' son, wroth for Antilochus, his dear friend, armed for vengeance terrible upon the Trojans. But Peleus' son, wroth for Antilochus, his dear friend, armed for vengeance terrible upon the Trojans. Armed for vengeance, terrible upon the Trojans. Okay, like the first part of the first one, second part of the second one, so here we go. And cowers not under affliction's stroke. 
But Peleus' son, wroth for Antilochus his dear friend, armed for vengeance terrible upon the Trojans. Yea, and these... Yea, and these with all... Armed for vengeance terrible upon the Trojans. Yea, and these withal, despite their dread of mighty Achilles' spear, poured battle-eager forth their gates. Where are we here? But Peleus' son. No, we're here. Wroth. Yea, and these... Vengeance terrible upon the Trojans. Yea, and these withal, despite their dread of mighty Achilles' spear, poured battle-eager forth their gates. For now the fates with courage filled their breasts, of whom many were doomed to die. Of whom many were doomed to hate. Oh yeah, this is really hard. Of whom many were thrust down by. Of whom many were doomed to Hades to descend. Of whom many were doomed to Hades to. Of whom many. Of whom. Breasts. Of whom many filled their. For now the fates with courage filled their breasts, of whom many were doomed to Hades to descend. Whence there is no return, thrust down by hand. Courage filled their breasts, of whom many were doomed to Hades to descend. Whence there is no return, thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall. There's no return, thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall. I like the first one. Of whom many were doomed to Hades to descend, whence there is no return, thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by swiftly met the front. I think I did a second take on that. Swift met him. Also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall. Swift met the fronts of conflict, all the tribes of Troy's host thrust down by. Swift met the fronts of conflict, all the tribes of Troy. Yeah, this needs to be louder. By Priam's wall. Swift met the fronts of conflict, all the tribes of Troy's host and the battle-biting Greeks, afire with that new kindled fury of war. with that new kindled fury of war. Of war. Thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also... Wait, what? Oh, oh, I, I did this whole thing again, huh? Thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, swift met... Thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall, thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall. Swift met the fronts of conflict, all the tribes of Troy's host and the battle-biting Greeks, afire with that new kindled fury of war. Swift met the fronts of conflict, all the tribes of Troy's host and the battle-biting Greeks, a fire with that new kindled fury of war. A fire with that new kindled fury of war. That's yeah, kind of identical, but there's a couple of better takes here. Whence there is no return. Thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son. Thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son. That part's better. Whence there is no return. Thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall. Thrust down... So let's put a marker here. Also, I like this better. Swift met the fronts of conflict. Swift met the fronts of conflict. That makes more sense. Good. 
by Priam's wall. Swift met the fronts of conflict, all the tribes of Troy's same day by Priam's wall. Swift met the fronts of conflict, all the tribes of Troy's host. Okay, now let's listen to it. And for vengeance terrible upon the Trojans. Yea, and these withal, despite their dread of mighty Achilles' spear, poured battle-eager forth their gates. For now the fates with courage filled their breasts, of whom many were doomed to Hades to descend, whence there is no return. Thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day. Okay, so the, 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 the timing of this part is difficult. It's a very long sentence. Breasts, of whom many, many were forth their gates, for now the fates with courage filled their breasts, of whom many were doomed to Hades to descend, whence there is no return. Thrust down, there is no return. Thrust down, courage filled their breasts, of whom many were doomed to Hades to descend, whence there is no return. Thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall. Swift met the front that same day by Priam's wall. Swift met the thrust down by hands of Aeacus' son, who also was foredoomed to perish that same day by Priam's wall. Swift met the fronts of conflict, all the tribes of Troy's host and the battle-biding Greeks, afire with that new kindled fury of war. Thrust down by hands of who also was foredoomed to fire with that new kindled fury of war. Biting Greeks, a fire with that new kindled fury of war. Then through the foe the son of Peleus made wide havoc. All around the earth was drenched with all around the earth was drenched with gore. Then through the foe the son of Peleus made wide havoc. All around the earth was drenched with gore, and choked with corpses were the streams of Simois and De and choked with corpses were the streams of Simois and Xanth. Corpses were the streams. Choked with corpses were the Simois. Oops. And choked with corpses were the streams of Simois and Xanthus. Still he. Earth was drenched with gore and choked with corpses were the streams of Simois and Xanthus. Still he chased, still slaughtered. Still he chased, still slaughtered, even to the city's walls. Still slaughtered, even to still he chased, still slaughtered, even to the city's walls. For panic fell on all the host. And now all he had, and now all had he slain. Panic fell on all the host. And now, for panic fell on all the host, and now all had he slain, had dashed the gates to earth, rending them from their hinges, or the bolts, hurling himself against them, had he snapped, and hurling himself against them, had he snapped, and for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way. What is the sentence here? Hold it. And now all had he slain. And what they mean by this is, and now he would have slain them all, would have dashed the gates to the earth, rending them from their hinges or the bolts, hurling himself against them, had he snapped. Hurling himself against them, he would have snapped the gates. Right. It's very complicated English uh, gram grammatical, archaic grammar. Rending them from their hinges or the bolts, hurling himself against them had he snapped. And, and for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a... Bolts, hurling himself against them had he snapped. And for the... Da against them had he snapped. 
and for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way, and had utterly dis had utterly destroyed Priam's burg had made a way, had utterly destroyed that goodly town. But now was Phoebus wroth. But now was Phoebus wroth again. And for the Danaeans. So this is one of the really confusing things about this story, is this chapter is about as as you heard at the beginning. It is about how hero Achilles was laid low by this shaft of a god. And the god that shoots him is Apollo. But they, they don't call him Apollo. Uh, you know, Quintus calls him Phoebus, which is one of Apollo's less popular other alternative names. Um, and it's kind of weird because like, who's this guy Phoebus shooting Achilles? You know, like I... First of all, I thought Paris was the one who shoots Achilles, which does occur in some of the stories, but not in post America version. And then, what, who's Phoebus? You know, like he seems like he's a god, but like I guess he's Apollo because he's shooting with a bow and arrow. Like, you know, that Quintus kind of like uh, revels in being confusing sometimes, I feel like. The gates to earth, rending them from their hinges, or the bolts hurling himself against them had he snapped. And for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way, had utterly destroyed that goodly town. But now was Phoebus destroyed that goodly town. But now was Phoebus wroth Priam's burg had made a way. Had this needs to be shorter. Had made a way, had utterly destroyed that goodly town. But now was Phoebus wroth against him with grim fury, when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him. And for the Danaeans into Priam's burg. But now was Phoebus wroth against him with grim fury, when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him. Countless troops of heroes slain of him. And for the countless troops of heroes slain of him. And for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had but now was Phoebus wroth against him with grim fury, when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him. And for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way had utterly destroyed that goodly town. Mm, mm. But now... So he switched, okay. And for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way, had utterly destroyed that goodly town. And for the Danaeans... Had he snapped, and for the Danaeans into Priam... Hold on, let's not switch this yet. But now was Phoebus wrong. And for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way, had utterly destroyed that goodly town. I do like that take but better. But now was Phoebus wroth against him with grim fury, when he saw those, when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him, when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him. Hmm. But now was Phoebus wroth against him with grim fury, down from Olympus with a lion leap he came. I don't know. I kind of like both of these. Had utterly takes. destroyed that goodly town. Utterly destroyed that goodly town. And for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way, had utterly destroyed that good. And for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way, had utterly destroyed that goodly town. Them had he snapped, and for the Danaeans into Priam's burg, hurling himself against them had he snapped, and for the Danaeans into Priam's burg had made a way, had utterly destroyed that goodly town. But now was Phoebus wroth against him with grim fury when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him. But now was Phoebus wroth against him with grim fury, when he saw those when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him. No, I think it should be more it should be the first take, the like the more excited version. Cause in this part it's not really about we're not slowing down yet. This is one of those instances where the gods take a direct it's pretty often in Greek, Greek mythology, to be honest, but in the Trojan War, Zeus keeps having to try and tell people, like, stop taking direct roles in the battle. We, you're not supposed to alter the outcome here, but the gods keep doing it anyway. That's kind of the story of the Iliad. And this is a clear example of, in the Iliad, uh, um, Apollo comes in and, and tricks Achilles to save Hector um, in, in one instance. <laughs> not every instance. Uh, but in in this one, uh, Apollo is also very much siding with the Trojans, um, and is is 
basically just trying to get Achilles to stop slaughtering them for a minute because it's it seems too unfair to him. Berg had made a way, had utterly destroyed that goodly town. But now was Phoebus wroth against him with grim fury when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him. Down from Olympus with a lion leap he of heroes slain of him. Down from Olympus with a lion leap he came, his quiver on his shoulders lay, and shafts that deal the wounds incurable. And shafts that deal the wounds incurable. Quiver on his shoulders lay, and shafts that deal the wounds incurable. Facing Achilles stood he, round him clashed. Okay, let's get this a little louder. There's a part here where I tried to find Apollo's voice, especially because they're both supposed to be angry, and I didn't, I, like, they started to sound too similar to me, my angry Achilles voice and my angry Apollo voice, so I took, like, four, 14 different takes. You could see these, like, Achilles, Achilles, Achilles. These are all me trying to come up with a voice. Both against him with grim fury when he saw those countless troops of heroes slain of him. Down from Olympus with a lion leap he came, his quiver on his shoulders lay, and shafts that deal the wounds incurable. Facing Achilles stood he, round him clashed quiver and arrows, blazed with quenchless flame his eyes, and shook the earth beneath his feet. Then with a terrible shout the great god cried, so to turn back from war Achilles, awed by the voice divine. That was a pretty good one, one breath take. Then, with a terrible shout, the great god cried, so to turn back from war Achilles, awed by the voice divine, and save from death the Trojans. But this is better. The second one's better. Then, with a terrible shout, the great god cried, so to turn back from war Achilles, awed by the voice divine. Yeah, it's usually ill-advised. It's hard to tell where to take a breath with a lot of this Greek stuff, because the punctuation is sometimes non-existent and sometimes very strange. But uh, usually you have to take a second take and invent your own spots to stop. Blazed with quenchless flame his eyes, and shook the earth beneath his feet. Then with a terrible shout the great god cried. So to shout the great god cried. So to turn back from war Achilles. Great god cried. So to turn back from war Achilles, awed by the voice divine, and save from death the Trojans. Back from the Trojans. Yeah, this is where I'm trying to come up with, so let's put a marker here. I'll play them for you guys if you want to hear the alternate Apollos. Back from the Trojans, back from the Trojans, back from the Trojans. Beseems not that long, beseems not. Phoebus, why dost save from death? Back from the Trojans, back from the Trojans. Beseems not that back from the Trojans, beseems not. Back from the Trojans. Yeah, you can see that it but nothing, took me a but while. Nothing. This is what I ended up with. Let's see what it sounds like. I think we have two takes of this final voice. Back from the Trojans, Peleus' son. Beseems not that longer thou deal death unto thy foes, lest an Olympian god abase thy pride. I like the second take better. Back from the Trojans, Peleus' son. Beseems not that longer thou deal death unto thy foes, lest an Olympian god abase thy pride. This one's a little bit, the, the anger comes through better on that one. Because Apollo also just kind of doesn't like Achilles. Um, yeah, I read, I was reading a thing about how every Greek hero kind of has their like archenemy god, like Heracles or Hercules, uh, you know, very clearly is opposed by Hera, which is why he was named Heracles to try and appease Hera the uh, you know wife of Zeus that didn't didn't always work out so well. Death the Trojans. And for Achilles, it's definitely Apollo is his like antithesis. From death the Trojans. Death the Trojans. Back and save from death the turn back from war Achilles, awed by the voice divine, and save from death the Trojans. Back from the Trojans, Peleus' son. Beseems. Peleus' son, beseems not that longer thou deal death unto thy foes. Yes, good. Blazed with quenchless flame his eyes, and shook the earth beneath his feet. 
Then with a terrible shout the great god cried, so to turn back from war Achilles, awed by the voice divine, and save from death the Trojans. Back from the Trojans, Peleus' son. Beseems not that longer thou deal death unto thy foes, lest an Olympian god abase thy pride. But nothing, but nothing quailed the hero at the voice immortal. This one took me a minute to come up with the, what they were trying to get across. Noth but nothing quailed the hero at the voice immortal. But nothing quailed the hero at the voice immortal. But nothing quailed the hero at that voice immortal. But nothing quailed the hero at the voice immortal. For that... Pride. But nothing quailed... Lest an Olympian god abase thy pride. But nothing... Abase thy pride. But nothing quailed the hero at the voice of God abase thy pride. But nothing quailed the hero at the voice immortal, for that round for that round him even now hovered the unrelenting fates. He wrecked not a quailed the hero at the voice immortal. For that round him even now hovered the unrelenting fates. He wrecked not of the god and shouted his defiance. Oh, yeah, that is. Shouted his defiance. Him even now hovered the unrelenting Okay. Him even now hovered the unrelenting fates. He wrecked naught of the god and shouted his defiance. Phoebus! This is yeah, that's where we want to be. He wrecked naught of the god and shouted his defiance. He wrecked naught of the god and shouted his defiance. That. And shouted his defiance. Phoebus, why? And now Achilles is. I I tried to get him at the most pissed he's ever been, really, because at this moment in the story, you're gonna hear him make a mistake that basically is the stupidest thing you could do in a Greek story. <laughs> and I I figure that the only way he would be so stupid is that he's just completely blind with rage, which, you know, is pretty well communicated through the text as well. Even now hovered the unrelenting fates. He wrecked naught of the god and shouted his defiance. Phoebus! Okay, we should make that shorter, though. He wrecked naught of the god and shouted his defiance. Phoebus, why dost thou in mine own despite disturb me to fight with gods and wouldst protect the arrogant Trojans? Heretofore hast thou by... Heretofore hast thou by... The arrogant trope. Tech. Tech. Yeah, so like this and this. Tech the arrogant Trojans. Heretofore hast thou by fight with gods and wouldst protect the arrogant Trojans. And own despite disturb me to fight with gods, and wouldst protect the arrogant Trojans. Heretofore hast thou by thy beguiling turned me from the fray. Heretofore hast thou by thy beguiling turned me from the fray. I like the first one where he's very clearly like blaming it. By thy beguiling turned me from the fray. Turned me from the fray. I think they're both pretty good. Heretofore hast thou by thy beguiling turned me from the fray. Heretofore hast thou by thy beguiling turned me from the fray. When from destruction thou at the first didst save Hec- When from destruction thou at the first didst save- He's complaining here that uh, when Hermes, or Hermes, uh, Apollo saved Hector the first time, by thy beguiling turned me from the fray, when from destruction thou at the first didst save Hector. Turned me from the fray, when from destruction thou at the first didst save Hector, whereat the Trojans all through Troy exulted. Nay, thou get thee back. The first didst save Hector, whereat the and thou at the first didst save Hector, whereat the Trojans all through Troy exulted. Nay, thou get thee back. Return unto the mansion of the blessed, lest I smite thee. 
I am mortal though thou be. <coughs> That's me trying to do the, those raspier voices. They really get to my, you know, it starts to make me cough after a while. Turn unto the mansion of the blessed, lest I smite thee. I am mortal though thou be. Oh, I like the second one. It's more smoldering. All right, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hey, thou get thee back. Let's put a marker here. Then on the god he turned his. So we only have two takes of that. Lest I, I don't think my voice could take two, more than two takes of that. Lest I smite thee, I am mortal though thou be. Yeah, it's too, too big for the ending. Return unto the mansion of the blessed. Nay, thou get thee back. Return unto the mansion of the blessed. Return unto the mansion of the blessed. Lest I smite thee. Thee back. Return unto the mansion of the blessed. Lest I smite thee. to the mansion of the blessed, lest I smite thee. I am mortal though thou be. Return unto the mansion of the blessed, lest I smite thee. Take that little piece out of there. The mansion of the blessed, lest I smite thee. I am mortal. Nay, thou get thee back. Return unto the mansion of the blessed, lest I smite thee. I am mortal though thou be. So the, the, this fatal flaw that I'm talking about here um, being that Achilles is so pissed that he's actually, uh, you know, Hermes is kind of, or I don't know why I keep calling him Hermes. Apollo keeps is basically just giving him a warning, like, Achilles, get, get out of here. You know, I'm telling you, you got to go. Like, you, you can't keep fighting the Trojans here. And Achilles is saying, like, I, you better not stop me, Apollo. I will also, I'll kill you if I have to. And like, obviously, you know, that's, that's a no-no. Nobody, nobody gets away with that against one of the gods. Well, a couple people do, but it doesn't work out very well most of the time. From the fray, when from destruction thou at the first didst save Hector. Then on the god he turned his back and sped after the Trojans fleeing cityward. Then on the god he turned his back. Then on the god he turned his back and sped after the Trojans fleeing cityward and harried still there. He is since. Immortal though thou be. Then on the god he turned his back and sped after the Trojans. Then on the god he turned his back and sped after the Trojans fleeing cityward, and harried still their flight. But wroth at heart thus Phoebus spake to his indignant soul. Turned his back. Okay, so now let's hear Achilles' thing that is put together, make sure that it all fits. We switched a couple takes in there. For the unrelenting fates, he recked not of the god, and shouted his def what the great god cried. So to turn back from war, Achilles, awed by the voice divine, and save from death the Trojans. Back from the Trojans, Peleus' son. Beseems not that longer thou deal death unto thy foes, lest an Olympian god abase thy pride. But nothing quailed the hero at the voice immortal, for that round him even now hovered the unrelenting fates. He recked not of the god, and shouted his defiance. Phoebus! Why dost thou in mine own despite disturb me to fight with gods, and wouldst protect the arrogant Trojans? Heretofore hast thou by thy beguiling turned me from the fray, when from destruction thou at the first didst save Hector, whereat the Trojans all through Troy exulted. Nay, thou get thee back. Return unto the mansion of the blessed, lest I smite thee. I am mortal though thou be. Then on the god he turned his back, and sped after the Trojans. There's a little bit of time there. I am mortal though thou be. Then on the god he turned his back, and sped after the Trojans fleeing cityward, and harried still their flight. But wroth at heart thus Phoebus spake to his indignant soul. So at this point, Phoebus is basically saying like, damn, you know, I can't believe you're making me do this. But as we'll find out, despite Achilles being a dick, and basically, you know, challenging 
threatening a god, everybody's still pissed at a, at a Apollo for for doing what he does. He is sense bereft, but now he is sense bereft. Yeah. So at this point, it's kind of like I was tr trying to wonder whether Apollo would be more angry or confused or almost like amused by this a and a little bit of disappointed I feel he should also have in there I I went through a few different versions of this out on this man he is sense bereft out on this man he is sense bereft he is sense bereft but now not Zeus him but now not Zeus himself nor any other power shall save this madman who defies the gods out on this man See, he is sense bereft I like that one that that one's pretty how do I get a okay that's a good way to do that he is sense bereft he is sense bereft out on this man he is sense bereft but now not Zeus himself nor any other power shall save this madman who defies the gods shall save this madman who defies the gods from mortal sight, he vanished. Okay, so this is going to be our take for this part. Uh, Tom, this man. We need to construct a performance out of these takes, though, because I really did a lot of versions of this stuff. To his indignant soul. Out on this light. But wroth at heart thus Phoebus spake to his indignant soul. Out on this man, he is sense bereft. But thus Phoebus spake to his indignant soul. Out on this man, he is sense bereft. So yeah, we got a good little combo of like, he's clearly like, you know, he's like upset that not mad, but he is. Like, he's also just like disappointed is such a stupid answer. But now bereft, but now, but now not Zeus himself nor any other power. Sh but now not Zeus himself nor any other power shall save this madman who defies the gods. But now not Zeus himself nor any other power shall save this madman who defies the gods. Yeah, there's a little bit of like smoldering coming up from there where he like he is pretty upset that he is uh being completely disrespected. Alright, I'm happy with that. Out on this man. He is sense bereft. Spake to his indignant soul. Out on this man. He is sense bereft. But now he is sense bereft. But now not spake to his indignant soul out on this man he is sense bereft but now not Zeus himself nor any other power shall save this madman who defies the gods out on this man okay let's put a marker here and what else we got? madman who defies the gods shall save this madman who defies the gods who defies the gods from mortal sight he vanished From mortal, from mortal sight, he vanished and, and cloaked with mist. Of who defies the gods. From mortal sight, he vanished. Any other power shall save this madman who defies the gods. From mortal sight, he vanished into cloud and cloaked with mist. A baleful shot he shot. A baleful shot he shot. That is not the line. Sometimes it's, you know, it's the god. Reading it quick with this type of prose, it, you can get it wrong. It's important to, you know, I do a lot of uh, QA checking afterwards because there, there are instances where I, it just totally gets past me. Who defies the gods. From mortal sight, he vanished into cloud and cloaked with mist, and cloaked with mist, a baleful shaft he shot which leapt to Achilles' ankle. We all know that part. He vanished into cloud, and cloaked with mist, a baleful shaft he shot, which leapt to Achilles' ankle, which leapt to Achilles' ankle, which leapt to Achilles' ankle, 
sudden pangs. I think these are pretty much the same. I'll take the second take. Baleful shaft he shot, which leapt to Achilles' ankle. Sudden pangs with mortal sickness made his whole heart faint, leapt to Achilles' ankle. Sudden mist, a baleful shaft he shot, which leapt to Achilles' ankle. Sudden pangs with mortal sickness made his whole heart faint. He reeled, and like a tower he fell, that falls smit by a whirlwind when an earthquake cleaves a chasm for rushing blast from underground. That was a really hard sentence to read. Sudden pangs with mortal sickness made his whole heart faint. He so the, in this scenario, uh, you're clearly seeing that it's only Apollo that's killing Achilles. Um, whereas the thing that most of us think of when uh, Achilles is shot with the arrow it, it, is that it was shot by Paris. Um, but yeah, in this version of the story, it's very definitively just Apollo doing it. Like usually it's explained that like Apollo is the one guiding the arrow that that it is shot by Paris and it's guided by Apollo into his thing. Kind of like when uh, uh, Athena does that a lot too, where it's like, oh yeah, she guided this thing, this this javelin or whatever, it hit somebody. But uh, in this case, it's definitely just Apollo doing it because and Achilles was speaking directly to him. Spake to his indignant soul, out on this man, he is since bereft. But now not Zeus himself nor any other power shall save this madman who defies the gods. From mortal sight he vanished into cloud, and cloaked with mist a baleful shaft he shot, which leapt to Achilles' ankle. Sudden pangs with mortal sickness made his whole heart faint. He reeled, and like a tower he fell. He reeled, and like a tower he fell, that falls smit by a whirlwind, when an earthquake that falls smit by a whirlwind when an earthquake cleaves a chasm for a rushing blast from underground. When an earthquake, when an earthquake cleaves a chasm for a rushing blast from underground. So fell the good. I actually think the first take is better on that, even though I'm a little breathless by the end of it. Heart faint. He reeled and like. Blast from underground. So f rushing blast from underground. So fell the goodly form of Eacus' son. He glared, a murderous. He glared. Chasm for rushing blast from. And like a tower he fell, that falls smit by a whirlwind when an earthquake cleaves a chasm for rushing blast from underground. So fell the goodly form of Eacus' son. He glared a murderous glance to right to left. Oh, this part's fun. This is. Everybody gets their nice little like death speech in this story. Achilles gets many uh, moments like that. And I think they're just so fun to do. I originally tried to do it where I was like coughing during it, like really having it be pretending that the character is dying, but it didn't really work. It works better just reading it. Mished into cloud and cloaked with mist, a baleful shaft he shot, which leapt to Achilles ankle. Sudden pangs with mortal sickness made his whole heart faint. He reeled, and like a tower he fell, that falls smit by a whirlwind when an earthquake cleaves a chasm for a rushing blast from underground. So fell the goodly form of Eacus' son. He glared a murderous glance to right to left upon the Trojans, and a terrible threat shouted, a th and a terrible threat shouted, a threat that could not be fulfilled. He glared a murderous glance to right to left, Upon the tro he glared a murderous glance to right to left upon the Trojans, and a terrible threat shouted, a threat that could not be fulfilled. Yeah, that that's the correct way to do that. I kind of fumbled on the one part of that line, but I don't think it's terrible. Form of Eacus' son. He glared a murderous glance from underground. So fell the goodly form of Eacus' son. He glared a... So fell the goodly form of Eacus' son. He glared a murderous glance to right to left upon the Trojans. Can I get rid of that? To left. Maybe I can just cut this. Right to left upon the Trojans. Right to left upon the Trojans. I kind of I can just cut pieces out of that. Glance to right to left upon the Trojans, and a terrible th when an earthquake cleaves a chasm for rushing blast from underground. 
So fell the goodly form of Eacus' son. He glared a murderous glance to right to left upon the Trojans, and a terrible threat shouted, a threat that could not be fulfilled. Threat shouted, a threat that could not be fulfilled. Who shot at me? Who shot at me a stealthy smiting shaft? Who shot at me a stealthy smiting shaft? Let him but smiting shaft. Who shot smiting Sh shaft? Let him but dare to meet me. Fa Who shot smiting shaft? Shaft smiting or shaft? shaft? I guess they both kind of work. I don't know. Who shot at me a stealthy smiting shaft? Who shot at me a stealthy smiting shaft? Yeah, I try to get a little bit of that quivering. Dead, dead, dying guy quivering. Replaces the uh, active coughing into the microphone. Not be fulfilled. Who shot at me a st that could not be fulfilled? Who shot at me a stealthy smiting shaft? Let him but dare to meet me face to face. So shall his blood and all his bowels gush out about my spear. And he, sh and he be hellward sped. His bowels gush out about my spear. And he be hellward sped. I know that none can meet me man to man and... Bowels gush out about my spear. And he be hellward sped. I know that none can meet me man to man and quell in fight. I know that none can meet me man to man and quell in fight. Of earth... He be hellward sped. I know that none can meet me man to man and quell in fight. Of earthborn heroes, none. Though such an... Though such an one... Of earthborn heroes, none. Though such an one should bear within his breast a heart unquailing, and have... And have thews of brass. But... The heart unquailing, and have thews of brass. But dastard... St but dastard still in stealth... Brass. But dastard still in stealthy ambush look But dastard still in stealthy ambush lurk for lives of heroes. But dastard still in stealthy ambush lurk for lives of heroes. Okay, it's getting a little clipped here. I guess I did this part pretty loud. It's not too bad though. Brass. But dastard still in stealthy ambush lurk for lives of heroes. Let's actually just turn it down a little bit, I guess. It doesn't fix the distortion, but it, it actually does make it nicer to listen to. But dastard still in stealthy ambush lurk for lives of heroes. Let him face me then. Let him face me then. That's better. Bush lurk for lives of heroes. Let him face me then. Aye, though he be lives of heroes. Let Still in stealthy ambush, lurk for lives of heroes. Let him face me then. Aye, though he be a god whose anger burns against the Danaeans. Yea, mine heart forebodes that this my smiter was Apollo. This part I did a lot of takes on because I was trying to figure out the motivation of of this part. Is he realizing it in the moment? Is is he more sad about it? Is he more angry about it? Against the Danaeans. Yea. Mine heart forebodes that this my smiter was Apollo, cloaked in, cloaked in deadly darkness. So in days gone by, my mother told me that how by his shafts I was to die before the sea and gates of pitiless death. So in days gone, so in days gone by, my, so in days gone by, my mother told me that how by his shafts I was to die before the sea and gates of piteous death. I like the little quaver. The words were not vain words. So I like that gone one. By, my mother told me that how by his shafts I was to die before the sea and gates, a piteous death. Her, ver her words were not vain words. This is a good take this one before that. There we go. But. Whose anger burns against the Danaeans. Yea, mine high. Though he be a god whose anger burns against the Danaeans. Yea. Mine heart forebodes that this my smiter was Apollo. Burns against the Danaeans. 
Yay. Mine heart. It's interesting because he kind of fakes as if he's saying, like, who shot me? Like, you know, how could a cowardly uh, archer try to take me down, like, fight me one-on-one? -on -one? And then you realize he knew the whole time that it was Apollo. You know, he, he, re he knew it was Apollo, but he's now he's still saying to Apollo, like, I could have taken you if you only fought fair. But, of course, the gods don't have to fight fair if they don't That's want to. That's against the Danaeans. Yay. God whose anger burns against the Danaeans. Yay. Mine heart. God whose anger burns against the Danaeans. Yay. Mine heart forebodes that this my smiter was Apollo. Cloaked in, cloaked in deadly darkness. Deadly dark. Deadly. Can I get this away with this? Cloaked in deadly darkness. That's why I like that a lot. That he's like, you know, breaking up that line. That's good. That was an accident too, because I botched the line and then did it again. Smiter was Apollo, cloaked in deadly darkness. So in days gone by, my mother told. So in days gone by, my. Cloaked in deadly darkness. So in days gone by, my mother told me that how by his shafts I was to die before. Good stuff. We're getting some good stuff here, ladies and gents. You never know how it's going to come together until you really start cutting it. Ends. Yay. Mine heart forebodes that this my smiter was Apollo, cloaked in deadly darkness. So in days gone by, my mother told me that how by his shafts I was to die before the sea and gates, a piteous death. Her words were not vain words. Achilles is a fun character. Shafts, I was to die before the sea and gates. A piteous death. Her words were not vain words. Her words were not vain words. Were not vain words. Okay. So we actually got through, I didn't expect this, but we got through the whole um, section here. This is everything I've recorded so far. I thought I was, uh, I mean, obviously you see it now that it's like, it's only five minutes of finished content, but you never know how, I mean, it was like 15 minutes of, uh, of recorded content and also who knows how long it's gonna take to cut. It's good, we got through that part and it sounds, sounds pretty good. Book three, how by the shaft of a god laid low was hero Achilles. I want to compare my uh, Achilles reference for every character that has a recurring role in another chapter. Uh, I will re I will do a reference audio so I can match their voice. So he has this voice when he's not angry. With what vain vauntings triumphing hast thou come forth against us? But as he gets angrier, he gets more raspy. In the dust lie there a prey to teeth of dogs, to raven's beaks, thou wretched thing. Who cozened thee to come forth? Yeah, and then he gets real mad in this one. Dost thou in mine own despite disturb me to fight with gods? Yeah, it sounds like the same guy. Because you never, you know, it's hard to kind of like, you don't want to just copy the voice. Uh, because then you're not acting. You're not. You're not coming up with different moods and different, you know, motivations and stuff. But it still has to sound like it came from the same person. Good, great, ladies and gents. That's gonna do it for the uh, Post America editing this time. I guess I gotta go uh, record some more, <laughs> record some more stuff, and uh, and and we'll we'll return to this point later. A lot of stuff goes down in this chapter, that's for sure. Now, uh, if you don't know the project, the Post Homerica is a ancient Greek epic story that was written somewhere between somewhere in like 300 to 400 AD, um, which was created as a sort of interstitial between the Iliad about the Trojan War and the Odyssey about Odysseus's journey coming back from the Trojan War. This kind of bridges the gap. Um, if you want to find out more about the project, you can uh, just check this 
command in chat, which uh, will give you actually a link to the uh, place where you'll be able to buy it when it comes out on the Audible store. Um, that's, that's my narrator page on Audible. You can also find at that link other books that I've already narrated that are up for sale right now. So give that a look, especially if you have some Audible credits kicking around. I'd certainly appreciate that. Um, guys, thanks for watching the show. If you want to see more of the uh, streams that I do, then, uh, then hit that follow button, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Have a great day.